Hello everyone. Today we'll continue talking about hyponatremia and we'll understand how we can use the physiology of ADH and aldosterone that we learned in the previous lecture to figure out what's going on with your patient. This will be a very clinically oriented diagnostic approach. So in the previous lecture, you learned that decreased osmolality and low effective circulatory volume were two of the stimulus for secretion for ADH, which works on the collecting ducts and form the aquaporin-2 molecules into the lumen and aids in absorption of free water. So let's see how sodium is normally regulated. Here we have a sodium of 140, hypothalamus, which secretes your ADH. This is a nephron and we have aquaporin molecules, the blue dots represent water, and we have urine concentration down in the rightmost corner. Normally, you always have some ADH state when your sodium is around 140. Let's say your sodium increases to 150. This is going to stimulate your osmoreceptor and hypothalamus, and it's going to stimulate ADH release. Increase ADH is going to stimulate aquaporin molecules in the collecting ducts and you are going to absorb more free water. As you absorb more free water, your urine is going to get concentrated. The extra free water that you absorbed is going to dilute your sodium back to 140 and everything comes back again to normal. Your aquaporin channels disappear and your urine osmolality returns to normal. Now let's see what happens when sodium goes down. Let's see if sodium is now 120. Now your hypothalamus is now inhibited by low osmolality and there will be no ADH in the system. If there is no ADH in the system, there will be no aquaporin molecules in the collecting ducts and all the free water that is in the system is going to go into the urine and your urine concentration therefore is going to fall down and you are going to make very dilute urine. And as you lose all this free water, your sodium is slowly going to come up and everything goes back to normal again. So the takeaway point is urine osmolality depends upon the ADH level and urine osmolality is a great way to know how much ADH is present. If you have got a lot of ADH, there will be a lot of aquaporin molecules and you'll make very concentrated urine. The maximum concentrating capacity of your urine by the kidneys is 1500 milliosmoles per liter. As your ADH drops, your aquaporin molecules starts disappearing and you make more and more dilute urine. In absence of ADH, the most dilute urine that you can make is about 50 milliosmol per liter. So step one in diagnosing hyponatremia is to order a urine osmolality because urine osmolality tells you if ADH is present or absent. If you've got high urine osmolality, more than 300 milliosmol per liter, there is ADH present. And if you have low urine osmolality, less than 100 milliosmoles per liter, there is no ADH present. So always order urine osmolality to know your ADH status. This is the figure that we looked in the previous lecture. Here it shows your plasma osmolality versus plasma ADH levels and ADH level rise as your plasma osmolality increases and drop as it decreases and below 280 there is hardly any plasma ADH in the system. So if your urine osmolality is low that means there is no ADH present and this is a normal response to hyponatremia. That means you are drinking a lot of water with very low solute relative to water and this would be seen in conditions such as primary polydipsia, psychogenic polydipsia, beer potomania, tea and toast diet. If your urine osmolality is high, that means there is an ADH present in the system, your urine osmolality will be higher and the question here to ask is, is this ADH an appropriate or an inappropriate response? Let's try to figure this out. In the previous lecture, you understood that low effective circulating volume is a good stimulus for volume retention. And it does by two methods, secreting aldosterone and in secreting ADH. 
aldosterone will result in sodium absorption and the water will follow the sodium as well while ADH only work with water reabsorption in the collecting ducts. If you've got low ECV, you are going to stimulate ADH secretion and ADH is going to add more acoporin channels in the collecting ducts which will result in more free water absorption and free water that is absorbed is going to make you hyponatremic. This is useful because it's increasing the volume which you need when you're dealing with low effective circulating volume. Now more robust response comes from aldosterone. Low ECV is a good stimulator for your renin angiotensin system which result in secretion of aldosterone and aldosterone results in sodium reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubules. As your aldosterone increase, you absorb more sodium and your urine sodium levels will drop. You do not become hypernatremic because the water follows salt in an iso or smaller pattern. So takeaway point is the urine sodium depends upon aldosterone levels and urine sodium is a very good way of knowing what your body feels about its effective circulating volume. So if your effective circulating volume is low, you have a lot of aldosterone present. And as your aldosterone levels increase, your urine sodium keeps on decreasing because now you're reabsorbing all the filtered sodium. Fina less than 1% has same clinical implication about your effective circulating volume. If you're on diuretic, you can use Fe urea. So how do you interpret urine sodium if urine osmolality is high? If your urine sodium is low, less than 10 milliequivalents per liter, that means there is an aldosterone present and that would mean that you have low effective circulating volume. That means you are not euvolumic and this would be an appropriate response. So a low urine sodium will tell you that this hyponatremia is coming from low ECV status. If your urine sodium is normal or high, that means there is no aldosterone present in the system and your ECV is therefore perceived as normal and you are possibly euvolumic. So this is an inappropriate response. So this would be diagnostic of SIADH. One of the things that you would have realized that we did not talk about hypervolumic hyponatremia. Now understand that hypervolumic hyponatremia as seen in heart failure, cirrhosis, and other diseases is in fact driven by intravascular hypovolemia. That means low effective circulating volume. So these are appropriately high ADH state. And you would have noted that as your heart failure worsens, your ADH response increases to hold on to more volume and your hyponatremia worsens. So let's summarize the workup for hyponatremia. The first question you ask is, is there any ADH in the system? because ADH causes hyponatremia. For this, you check your urine osmolality. If your urine osmolality is low, that means there is no ADH in the system, which is an appropriate response. That means your system is working normally and you are drinking a lot of water and not enough solute. And you'll be thinking about diagnosis like psychogenic polydipsia, beer potomania, and tea and toast diet. If your urine osmolality is more than 300 milliosmol per liter, that means there's ADH present in the system. And now the question you'll ask, what does your body perceive its effective circulating volume as? And for this, you check your urine sodium. If your urine sodium is low, less than 10 milliequivalents per liter, that means your system is making aldosterone that is hanging onto the sodium. And that would mean that you're intravascularly dry. So your body has ramped up ADH secretion as well, which is adding more water this is an appropriate response from the system and this would be diagnostic of hyponatremia from low effective circulating volume and this would be of two types hypovolemic and hypervolemic if your urine sodium is more than 20 milliequivalents per liter that means your system has no stimulus for aldosterone that means you are euvolemic so your body has inappropriately ramped up adh now in this case you are looking at siadh and you would be seeing in patients with lung cancer, etc. Thank you. In the next few lectures, we'll discuss these diagnostics separately.